So let's continue with our postulates. By definition, the distance between two points is the length of the line segment between the two points. And furthermore, here we have the segment addition postulate, which we're going to use actually quite a bit. So if x is a point on the segment AB and x is between AB, all right, so here's segment AB. We're going to put point x between. Then the length of AX plus the length of XB must equal the length of AB. All right, so let's say the length of this AX is 2. And let's say the length of XB is 5. Then we would say the length of the entire segment from AB would be 2 plus 5, or 7. So this is not just a little notation. This is the actual geometric statement. The length of AX plus the length of XB is equal to the length of AB. <clears throat> so congruency, line segments being congruent means they have the same shape and size. Well, lines don't really have a shape. They only, they only have a length. So congruent line segments are two line segments that have the same length. So if I had AB here and I had KL here, if I know that the length of AB is the same as the length of segment KL, I could say segment AB is congruent with segment KL. Lengths are equal, segments are congruent. And here we have an example of that, uh, that we have segment AB, segment CD, and segment EF. So in this figure, we are told that segment AB is congruent with segment CD but segment AB is not congruent with EF, meaning they do not have the same length. So do you think segment CD is going to be congruent with EF? We would say no, it does not appear they're congruent. They don't look like they have the same length. And here's our definition of midpoint. The midpoint of a line segment is the point that separates the segment into two congruent parts. So if here's segment XZ, and I say that point Y is the midpoint, by definition, that means that XY is congruent with YZ, which would also mean the length of XY equals the length of YZ. Now, how about a ray? A ray has <laughs> one end looks like a line, the other end looks like a line segment. A ray has one end point. <clears throat> Pardon me. A ray has one end point, but goes off into infinity in the other direction from the end point. So here's the line AB. See with the arrows? But here is the ray AB. The end point is A. The end point is always marked first in the name. Notice this ray, it still has the points A, B, but it, the end point is at B. This would have the name B, A. So for rays, the end point is named first. Now, what are opposite rays? Opposite rays are two rays that have a common endpoint, but their union is a straight line. In other words, they go in exact opposite directions. Here's the ray BC, and here's the ray BA. 
And so BC and BA would be considered opposite rays because they create a straight line or a straight angle, which is 180 degrees. We learned that in a previous section. All right, so let's talk about intersection. We've talked about intersection with sets, but now we're getting into intersection for geometric shapes. The intersection of two figures is the set of all the points that are in both figures. So in this particular case, here's line CD and point E is on line CD. Here's line AB, but point E is on line AB. So we would say the intersection of those two lines is the point E. And in fact, that leads us to a postulate. And remember, postulates are always assumed true. So you can use this postulate when using uh, creating your reasoning. If two lines intersect, two distinct, two different lines intersect, then they must intersect at a point. If two lines share two or more points, then they actually must be the exact same line. So here's line L and here's line M. They intersect at a single point. <clears throat> they only have one point in common. But if this is line L and here's line M, See how they have two points in common? That must mean that line L and line M are actually the exact same line. So let's kind of put together our building blocks here. A point is an undefined term. It is a point in space. But what is a line? A line is a set of points. So this point, and 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 this point. So a line is a set of points. So not surprising if lines intersect, they're going to intersect at a point. We'll get into this later in this section, but what is a plane? A plane is a set of lines. So this line, and then right next to it, this line, and then right next to it, this line, and right next to it, this line, and right next to it, this line. So that's going to look like a plane, a, a flat surface. So not surprisingly, when planes intersect, they're going to intersect at lines. We'll get to that in, in just a moment. Getting back to lines. Here's our definition of parallel lines. Parallel lines are in the same plane, but they never intersect. So here's our last undefined term here. Well, no, we'll get into space at the very end, but a plane is a collection of lines. It's like a flat surface. So like the, the top of a table or uh, the wall of a, a room or uh, a whiteboard would be considered a plane. So a plane is a flat surface such as the top of a table or a piece of paper. Here we have pictures. So if lines can be parallel, we had L was parallel to M before. Planes are flat surfaces. They are named with uppercase letters so here's plane S and here's plane R. Planes can also be parallel and never intersect. So we would say plane R is parallel with plane S. Planes can be parallel as well. They might never intersect. So you might think of like the walls of the classroom are parallel planes because they will never intersect. whereas the wall and the floor are not parallel because they intersect at the baseboard.
So plane is a two-dimensional object. It has an infinite number of points and it contains an infinite number of lines. And two points will define a plane. So just as collinear points are on the same line, coplanar points are on the same plane. So here's our new Here's our new phrase, coplanar. They're on the same plane. They'd be on the same piece of paper. So you need two points to define a line. You need three points to define a plane. And then all the planes together, that's what we call space. The space is the set of all possible points. It's a three-dimensional object. So here are two planes intersecting. And when two planes intersect, they intersect at a line. Uh, you can think of when you open a greeting card the front of the card is one plane and the back of the card is another plane. And they intersect at the fold. So if two planes intersect, they intersect at a line. And the intersection is actually infinite because these are actually lines. They go on and on.